Hello developers, how are you doing? Welcome to your channel Tapas Script where you learn things fundamentally. Hey, this is Tapas, your teacher. I teach things conceptually in the area of JavaScript, React, web development, full stack, content creation and so on. So if you happen to see any of our previous video, you know that I try to go in depth in concept first then talk about the stack. Alright, today I'm going to talk about a topic from JavaScript. Interesting. JavaScript is a vast language, you all know that. And the array part of JavaScript is quite interesting. It provides you a lot of methods to play around with data, right? You have methods like filter, map, reduce, all these things where you can use them to play around with data. But when I code in JavaScript, I usually miss one method of array. What do you know? I use a I use lot of data to kind of group together, dice them, slice them, pivot them. And I miss the group method a lot. And for that, as I don't find it in array, uh, JavaScript array, what I do is like I bank on a third party library like Lodash to use the group method and do my job, which is not bad. But what I want to do is like I want to do things more natively. That's why I was thinking like if there is a met native method available, like how we have sort method, filter method, if we have a group method available in JavaScript array, how cool that would be. But the wait is over. We already have a group method available natively with JavaScript. Yes, we are going to see that. So we are going to first understand what exactly grouping. Then we'll be talking about how we can actually group a JavaScript array based on a type or a parameter natively. Of course, there are some catches. Of course, there are certain things that you have to keep in mind. We'll be talking them as well. Okay, first let's learn what is grouping actually. All right, what's grouping then? Let's imagine I have a list of items that I like to take at a daily basis. And in the list of items, if you look closely, there are items like egg, which is like non-vegetarian. There are items like eggplant, which is like vegetarian. And there are also some fruits like kiwi, mango and things like that. Now, if I tell you that please group all these foods, all these eatables in a particular, based on particular type, how are you going to group them? You're possibly going to group them based on these types, like there are all vegetables together. They're all fruits together and they're all non-veg together. And then when you try to assign these elements to each group, they basically go to each group sits and that's how. In the vegetable group, you have all the vegetables. In the fruits group, you have all the fruits. In the non-veg group, you have all the non-veg listed over there. So this is what you have seen visually. But let us now do these things, exactly the same thing, programmatically using JavaScript as group method. Hey people, time for some coding. All right. So what we have here on screen is I have an index.html file, a very simple one, and it has a script imported called group default.js. Let me go to group default.js file. It's blank, of course. Now, first test like whether things works well or not, console.log, put some text like grouping and see whether it is coming into the console or not. Okay, it's appearing in the console, well and good. So it means all linking handle are fine. The very next thing that we are going to do now is to start with an array, an array something like that, a food element array that you have seen with its type and things like that, so that we can perform some grouping on top of that, okay? So I have an array like that. Let me put that first. Here goes the array. I have a my eatables array, which is having a bunch of food with their type and there is a count. What is this count for? Let's imagine that, for example, I eat tomato three times in a week and tomato is a vegetable. Similarly, I eat fish three times a week, which is a non-vegetarian item, right? So this is my food habit, you can think about it, all right. So time for grouping, how do we group? So for example, for grouping this array based on certain thing, based on what? You have to decide a type based on what you're going to group this. Are you going to group them based on type, count, or whatever it is? Okay, so what we're going to do now is we are going to group them based on type. Let's do that, const grouped equals to the array my array dot group and what does group method takes it takes again a callback function i'm writing it in form of an arrow function just like how do you do sort and filter and everything and the, the argument for this uh, callback function is always the each of the item of the array right and then to group it you have to return basically you have to return the parameter based on what you are trying to group so for example we are trying to group based on type you know in our case as we are doing this i have just returned it now next thing is i'm going to do a console dot log of grouped 
and I have got my output all the group result. What I'm going to do now, this is a bit hard for you to read, right? So I'll be pasting it and formatting it for you over here. So let me paste it and then try to format it. And then you'll be able to see like how this beautifully got grouped. Here goes the formatted text for you. As you are seeing, it's grouped by types so of vegetables. These are all vegetables. We have seen in that, you know, the visualization sometime back. There is a fruit, so these are fruits. There is a, there are non-vegetarian items, these are non-vegetarian items. So grouping happened perfectly. It's worked just awesome. Now, instead of just plain grouping, you might want to do certain kind of conditional grouping. For example, another use case, let us take. The use case is, I told about my food habits. Certain things I take just weekly once, but certain things I take more than once in a week. Now, I want to group of the items that are on track based on my food habits and needs improvement. So something I'm taking just once in a week need improvements. I need to take more. Something I'm already taking more, it's on track. Now what I'm going to do, first I'm going to take this out or comment it. Either way it works because it's going to throw some error. Now I'm going to perform my grouping. In this case, const, I'll be grouping by group by count equals to my eatables dot again the group function. You know what it takes. It takes a callback and that takes a argument which is the each of the element of an array. And here you have to return based on what you want to group. So our grouping is now based on conditions. So what we say if item dot count is greater than one, so it means my food habit is on track. All right, this is good. But if it is not the case, I want to say needs improvements. All right, so this is my grouping stuff. And after that, what I'm going to do instead of do, printing the grouped one, which you have seen already, I just want to do group by count. All right, so I have again a representation over here, which is like grouped by need improvements and grouped by on track. Let me just copy paste it again and show you what is the output. So here is a formatted output. Do you see that it groups based on needs improvement? So I need improvement on mostly vegetables, man, and fruits. And the things that are on track is like non veggies and there are certain fruits and vegetables that I like to eat. All right, so this is about grouping. This is great. And I hope that you understood. I have not used any external library over here. It's just using the native group method of an array to do it. Now there is another alternative. There is another, not exactly alternative, there is another method an on top of group method that is also there that method is called group to map let us know why exactly it exists and how it works so we have seen this output already right we have seen this is grouping by type now instead of group i am going to use another method called group to map this is again natively available and i am going to save and the output is something like this let me just copy paste this output for you and do a little bit of formatting so that you understand the output very well and i can explain this here goes the output. So output over here, the difference over here is like group to map method returns you a JavaScript map data structure itself. If you don't use group to map, if you use just a group method, it is going to send you the group representation, the group rep representation of the array elements. But in this case, you get a map itself. And the advantage of the map is once you have the map, you can just do grouped dot get and you pass the key which is like vegetables and what is going to, what this is going to return to you this one is going to return to you this particular array so after grouping you want to know what is the value of a particular group group to map is probably the easiest way when you do group to map and then you can use the get method to pass the key of the map and get the value of it okay let's see this one i'll just comment this so that i don't get error so if you see over here i'll just close this okay you see over here I got what? All the vegetables, right? This is all the vegetables. And for example, if you want to get all the fruits, you will be just passing fruits. You get all the fruits and so on. So you grouped it and you are able to fetch it. Isn't it awesome? So we learn how the group works. We learn how group to map works. Now it's time to understand what are the limitations that we have with the group and group to map natively available method in JavaScript. The first and foremost limitation is this method in today's date available only on Safari browser. So the browser I'm using over here is Safari. So it's available only on Safari. It is available on Firefox as well. 
but with a conditional flag enablement. It is not available on Chrome yet, but it is coming very, very soon. That's the great news. So it is coming very, very soon. Now, what you can do if you want to use this one in your project seamlessly, thinking that, okay, it is the support has already been added, uh, but I want to start using it. And later point of time, I don't, you know, uh, I don't want to bank on any other external libraries at all. At the same time, I don't want to stay away from using it because it is not there for other browsers. There is a certain way that you can actually do it. What you can do, you can start using a polyfill. So guys, if you are not familiar with CoreJS, I'm sure that you are familiar with CoreJS, but in case you are not familiar with CoreJS, this is an awesome open source project which gives you all possible polyfills. So polyfills are the code. Basically, these are your fallback or backup code for a functionality which are shortcoming on an environment, for example, a browser. So JavaScript actually coming up with various standards and the various feature requests. Now, all the browsers may not be up to date with all those feature request implementations. Certain browsers might be a little behind. The release will come after a while. But in between, if you want to st still use that particular feature seamlessly, you have to bank on Polyfill. So CoreJS actually provide you a great polyfill for this group method as well. So if you have never used CoreJS, take a look at it. It's an open source project. Try to contribute to it. It is an awesome project. Okay. Now let us see how can I use this polyfill. To use this polyfill, you can do multiple ways. For example, I can take it from CDN. I can just copy this one, this particular script tag and put it into my HTML file. That means I am using this particular polyfill straight away. Now, first we'll see without this polyfill, what is the behavior on Google Chrome? Then we'll put the polyfill and see like what is the behavior in Google or Google Chrome, how it changes. So here I am running the same functionality, same code, but instead of Safari, I'm running it on Google Chrome. And very straight away, I'm saying like group to map is not a function, it's not available. All right, so let my let me try my luck with group. So I see group is also not a function, so it doesn't work, right? It doesn't work at all. Now, the next thing that I can go, I can go to index.html file and I have copied that particular uh, library from, from CDN, actually the link to it, I'm going to paste it over here. So now you can again get it with npm install, yarn install, whatever ways, but for demonstration purpose, it is very quick for me to do it. Now I'm going to save this. So I just save this one and then, of course, I'm not using group.map. So, all right, and then let me enable the console log. Ta-da! Do you see what happened? Grouping started working. You see, grouping started working. I'm getting the grouping stuff on Google Chrome also. Now, let me try group to map. All right. And then let me close this one. And then let me put this one back. Wow, what I see? I see group to map also working. If I don't want to get the fruits and instead of that, I want to get everything basically from grouped in the map fashion. Look at that, I'm getting this map. And inside each of this map, I have entries, key, value, key, value, things working seamlessly, right? So until this is available on Google Chrome, until it is available fully on Firefox, you can use this polyfill. Now, once it is available, what you need to do, your only code change would be just remove the script. That's it. Your no other logic changes, no other code changes, no other... JavaScript code you are touching, just one thing you are touching, just removing this particular polyfill once this group method is widely supported in all the browser. Now, just to end, the group method and the group to map method is available only on Safari at this point of time. There is an experimental access on Firefox. On Chrome, there is no access, but it is coming very, very soon. Maybe somebody watching this video after a couple of months the support will be already there. Until then, you can use a polyfill. One polyfill source is CodeJS. That's why I'm using this polyfill and added this script tag over here. It started working on Chrome. Now, if, if it this gets native support across, you don't need this polyfill at all. Just go ahead and remove this line. Rest of the code remain as it is. So this is much, much better than banking on any heavy library outside. It is look almost native and you are using almost native functionalities of JavaScript array. Awesome, isn't it? So friends, I hope you learned something new today and you'll be putting that into practice. If you like this video, the request is as always to share among your friends, your circles, press the like button, put a comment, letting me know like how much you liked. And of course, the request is always like I'm putting a lot of effort to create content for you. Things are for free. 
the only support that you can give me is subscribing to this channel if you have not subscribed yet and of course you can also join me as a member where you get a lot of member only perks like my you know backstage videos and things like that i shared you know coming back very soon with the next video until then take a great care of yourself and enjoy your life